Welcome to part 2 of the Aesthetics Iceberg. If you haven't seen part 1, I'll link it in the corner and in the description. You should watch it before this one, since it provides some context to what this iceberg is, as well as the first two layers. Don't worry, I'll still be here when you catch up. If you've already watched the first part, welcome back. This is the second part of the three-part series of the Aesthetics Iceberg, and in this one we'll be covering layers 3 and 4 of the iceberg. We start getting into some more interesting and obscure aesthetics in this part, so stay tuned, because there is some really cool stuff in this video. This part will cover less fashion-based aesthetics and more internet aesthetics, so I'm pretty excited. I'm not going to keep you waiting, so let's dive back in. Clowncore is all about clowns, circuses, and that whole shtick. Despite clowns being associated with horror now, clowncore is a very happy and bright aesthetic. Common visuals include, well, clowns, bright red noses, polka dots, balloons, unicycles, and cakes. The fashion is basically just dressing up like a clown. Heavy white makeup, dyed hair, jester hats, overalls, and large shoes. Babycore is basically pastel softy combined with stereotypical visuals associated with babies. Imagine pastel blue and pink bottles, binkies, strollers, bibs, and other baby stuff. Aging up a bit, kidcore is all about the joys and toys about being a child, especially one growing up in the 80s. It's a very optimistic vibe with lots of bold reds, blues, and yellows. Visuals include smaller plastic playgrounds, the type you'd find inside daycares, toys for younger kids, colorful picture books, and bookshelves. A big part of kidcore is also Saturday morning cartoons. There is a fashion to kidcore, with its defining characteristics being horizontal striped long sleeve shirts in bold colors, washed out denim, light up sneakers or just old sneakers, as well as rainbow motifs. If you want a good example of kidcore in real life, just look at the Toys R Us branding. Webcore is an aesthetic centered around the glory days of the internet, from the mid-90s to the late 2000s, when the internet was used by many people but corporate involvement and major sites didn't streamline it. The old web was amateur, rough around the edges, and felt like a new frontier, which is what this aesthetic is all about. The look is based off of old HTML web design, which looks very cobbled together. Older desktop icons as well as 2000s era Windows tabs with that recognizable rounded blue border, grey body, and bold red X button are also staples of this aesthetic. This is an aesthetic reminiscing all about the older days of the web, where individualism and exploration were more common, and I really love it for that reason. Weirdcore is an online art aesthetic that takes amateur photographs of ordinary locations that nobody would really have a reason to capture, and then adds some basic edits and text over it to invoke a feeling of confusion and discomfort. This aesthetic is similar to Liminal Spaces, but it's less creepy and nostalgic and more confusing, almost eliciting a sense of dread because you're not even sure how to feel about it. The text overlaid over many of these images tends to either present statements or questions that are nonsensical, but have a threatening undertone because of the implications. It's really hard to explain because it's just… weird. Okay, so Trauma Core delves into some heavy topics like depression and abuse, so I'm gonna put a trigger warning up and if you think that you might be affected listening about these topics, you can fast forward to the next entry or just click off. I won't be saying or showing anything too explicit, however. Trauma Core is an aesthetic that is mostly used by people who have survived traumatic events, typically happening during childhood but not always. Some people view it as a proper coping mechanism and therapeutic, while others see it as distasteful and romanticizing drama. Visually, Trauma Core consists of edits of photographs. These pictures are of indoor spaces like bedrooms and bathrooms but not necessarily normal, lived-in ones. No, these look abandoned, almost liminal in their abnormality. They're dirty and rotting. The edits will also include a young children's cartoon character, like something from My Melody or Hello Kitty. This represents their childhood innocence and joy that was stolen away from them. This is usually accompanied by some text from the creator venting about their current emotional state. It's just a really depressing aesthetic, and due to its sensitive nature, it's frowned upon to participate in this aesthetic if you haven't gone through something traumatic yourself, 
since that would be considered appropriation or romanticization of a serious subject. Baddie is an aesthetic that is aimed at young women. It's all about looking as good as possible in line with current beauty standards, especially those pushed by television and music. Think about your stereotypical Instagram model and you'll get the gist. Tied t-shirts, crop tops, tank tops, and tube tops, as well as tight jeans, yoga pants, and short shorts make up a lot of the day-to-day -day fashion. Makeup that accentuates the eyelashes, eyebrows, and lips is a key feature, as well as straight long hair, sometimes with highlights. I am honestly at a loss for words on this one. I seriously don't know how to explain it. It's like abstract 3D computer art that's really blobby and almost amateur due to how empty the backgrounds are. Although I do guess that this is what was considered professional back in 2000, which is the year the aesthetic was named after. They look like designs you would find on the cover of an old textbook. It's such a bizarre aesthetic, it's stuff like this I wanted to find when starting this iceberg. Take clowncore and turn it goth. That's juggalo in a nutshell. Most people into the Juggalo aesthetic are fans of the music group Insane Clown Posse and other hip-hop groups under the Psychopathic Records label. Every year there's an event called The Gathering of the Juggalos, where people show up in Juggalo getups and listen to their favorite artists and bands perform live. Visually, the defining aspect of Juggalo is the black and white clown-styled makeup applied to the face. The Deism was an artistic movement that originated in the 1910s, and the fact that its influences reach into modern internet culture is a testament to how important it was. Dadaism was all about criticizing the rigid nature of society and sought to expose how meaningless it all was. This resulted in art that was surrealist in nature, but rather than completely warping it, it just changes it to make the original subject silly. It's really surprising how much these pieces of art resemble modern day memes, especially those of the surreal memes genre. Okay, so there's an absolutely insane story behind this that I can't fully explain right now because it would take too long and I don't want YouTube taking this video down. But Club Kids was a club in New York City which operated in the 80s and was known for some shady business. The club was known for its extremely flamboyant, over the top, and bright fashion, which is basically what the aesthetic is. But in 1996, one of the club's leaders, Michael Allig, and a fellow club member were part of a deal gone wrong, and they were eventually convicted of murdering a man, cutting up his body, and disposing of it in the Hudson River. Despite their efforts, they were caught, and in 1997, they were sentenced to 20 years in prison. This would have been the end of the club kid style, but it was able to survive by kind of assimilating itself into drag. Eventually, the two were released from prison, and in the late 2010s, the club kids fashion trend had a resurgence on Instagram. Pretty self-explanatory, this is an aesthetic all about militaries and war. People into this aesthetic include actual members of the military, history enthusiasts, and patriots who like that it shows their country's strength. Visuals of the aesthetic include pictures of soldiers and equipment, vehicles like tanks and jets, as well as camouflaged fatigues and dress uniforms. Adam Punk shares a huge overlap with retrofuturism, to the point where they're basically the same. In the 50s United States, atomic energy was the name of the game. Many people imagined a utopian future where technology, even stuff as small as cars, were powered by nuclear energy. This optimistic view manifested in a technology dominated through bright colors and bubble-like glass domes with all that 50s artistic flair. Basically, imagine the Fallout universe before the nuclear war, and that's Adam Punk in a nutshell. Witchcore is an aesthetic that kind of modernizes witches? While inspired by the stereotypical image of the witch, the look definitely does not match the old depictions. The reason why this aesthetic is so popular now is because witches have always been considered as women who have rejected societal expectations of how a woman should act and look and witches also tend to be more independent and care for themselves. As such, the idea of the witch has become popular among a lot of feminist movements. The visuals include those that were traditionally associated with witches, such as potions, bottles, swamps, and other natural stuff like forests, mushrooms, and moss, as well as magic-related items like tarot cards, wands, old books, and animals like cats, owls, and frogs. Fashion-wise, witchcore is actually not uncommon. I'd say that it's like a fusion of cottagecore clothing with goth makeup. 
Think about natural, dark earthen colored shawls, dresses, and skirts, with some black lipstick and eyeliner. Flowers are also present in the aesthetic, usually in the form of crowns. Wizard core is similar to witch core, but without any sort of feminist undertone. It's literally just people who like wizards and magic. So stuff like crystals, long robes, staffs, wands, tomes, and the iconic pointed hats are all part of this aesthetic. Liminal spaces are an aesthetic that have absolutely exploded in popularity over the past year or so. It started with the infamous backrooms image, and after that, and its associated creepypasta circulated around the internet, people started posting other images that gave off similar vibes, which were known as liminal spaces. The liminal space aesthetic is really interesting to me, because it combines both nostalgia and creepiness to create an atmosphere not really seen anywhere else. These images are calming, yet unnerving. The definition of a liminal space is a space that is nostalgic, yet appears in transitory periods of your life. This is why they're called liminal. In architecture, the word liminal means the physical space between two destinations. Basically, it means that it's somewhere you don't really expect to be making significant memories, but when images such as these are shown to you, it invokes those memories. Also, liminal space images never have people in them, which is a huge part of the unnerving factor they have. Some examples of liminal spaces include malls and schools during the night, pools, empty indoor playgrounds, and waiting rooms. However, they don't necessarily have to be a physical space, just a vibe you feel while anywhere. One of my favorite examples is this image Solar Sands described in his video about liminal spaces. It's a small house all by itself surrounded by snow, presumably near Christmas time due to the decorations. To me, this image is more than the nostalgic side. It reminds me of a long drive home after you spend some time at your relatives for Christmas. As your parents drive home through the rural night, you begin to doze off, but before you completely fall asleep, you see this house with its decorations for a split second before it fades into the inky blackness. There are many, many videos explaining liminal spaces in great depth, and I think that many of you have already watched those. But this is truly one of the best aesthetics in my opinion. I don't know, something about the feelings it invokes is just so addicting. I'd love to see some VR game where you just explore different liminal spaces. I'd probably have the headset on 24-7 if that was the case. Nostalgia Core is an aesthetic all about reminiscing about the childhood of many internet users, specifically those who grew up during the 90s and mid-2000s. Many of the visuals include brands of shows, games, and even food that is associated with childhood. Examples include The Magic School Bus, Mario Kart Wii, Wii Sports Resorts, Launchables, and Cosmic Brownies. There is some wearable fashion associated with this aesthetic, and it tends to be disposable accessories that we're obsessed with as kids for some reason, such as slap bracelets and silly bands. Researching this was a real treat, because it brought up many memories from elementary school that had been fading over time. Dreamcore can be split into two categories, the ethereal serene part and the surreal and weird part. The ethereal part refers to the peacefulness and joyousness of good dreams, Visuals include soft colors, light, and clouds. No negative feelings, no stress, just peace. The surreal part of Dreamcore shares a lot of similarities with Weirdcore and Liminal Space aesthetic. In fact, it's like a combination of the two. It has the emptiness and weird unnerving nostalgia of Liminal Spaces, combined with the randomness and surrealist aspects of Weirdcore. Just a weirder aesthetic that's kind of tough to explain, and that will be a trend going on. You guys will have to probably lean a lot of the vibes of the aesthetic from the pictures I show, and honestly, I like that about these aesthetics. They're very show, don't tell. Cryptid Core is an aesthetic which takes inspiration from the mysterious air around strange supernatural creatures known as cryptids. It's stuff like Bigfoot, Mothman, and aliens. Basically, this aesthetic is all about amateur investigators researching and interacting with these cryptids and trying to solve the mystery around them. This aesthetic has a vintage flair too, often taking inspiration from small American towns in the 80s and 90s. Basically, if you've ever watched Scooby-Doo, Stranger Things, or Gravity Falls, those shows encapsulate this aesthetic pretty well. It's a niche vibe, but one that definitely has its appeal. Comfy Cozy is all about being lazy. 
It's about those days where you spend all day in bed, not wanting to get out. Common visuals of this aesthetic include messy beds, stuffed animals, pajamas, along with other comfortable clothes. We've all had those times where we spend hours in bed after waking up, on our phones or reading a book, only getting up to go to the bathroom or grab some food. It's an aesthetic a lot of us can relate with. Nature core is all about nature, specifically the nature found in temperate climate forests. While there have been other nature themed aesthetics we have covered, such as cottage core, they all have some human element to them, such as buildings. However, nature core is just pure nature. Trees, plants, rocks, rivers, and wild animals. Yami Kawaii is a Japanese aesthetic which is based on the contrast between cute and dark. We already talked about the kawaii aesthetic before. Now imagine those cute characters and colors juxtaposed with darker themed objects and actions. For example, a knife that is pink and features Hello Kitty characters on it. There's an irony to seeing these stereotypically innocent characters seen on things or doing things that are typically considered more mature. It's almost similar to Trauma Core in that aspect, except Trauma Core is way more serious and sad, and this is more light and humorous in its irony. Destigil, which is Dutch for the style, is an artistic style which arose in the late 1910s. Like the other artistic movements we have talked about, it was a rejection of the institutional art standards of the time. Rather than the detailed, blended, and shaded depictions of life, Destigil sought to break down art into its most basic components. As such, a lot of the art looks the same, only using primary colors like red, yellow, and blue alongside white and black. These colors were rearranged in square, grid-like artwork with lots of hard lines. This style became quite popular, inspiring furniture and architecture, and most of you probably recognize it, even if you don't know what it was called. Fairy core is an aesthetic which tries to emulate the look and feel of traditional fairies. Of course, this means a lot of optimistic natural visuals, like forests, mushrooms, and baby animals. Other visuals include small wings, glitter, magic, and quaint overgrain paths and cottages. There is a fashion aspect to this aesthetic. It features light pastel colored dresses, glitter, and hair loosely styled in the form of buns and braids. There's also some jewelry involved in the form of dull gold and silver bracelets, rings, and earrings. Ghost core is an aesthetic about, surprise, ghosts. Yeah, it's kind of awkward to introduce a lot of these aesthetics because their name is pretty much self-explanatory. Anyway, visuals of ghost core include places that ghosts can be found and attributes of them, such as graveyards, abandoned mansions and hospitals, and foggy, moonlit nights. In terms of the actual ghosts themselves, almost any rendition of a ghost can be part of this aesthetic. It can be the modern horror ghost with pale skin, dirty black hair, loose-fitting, torn white dresses, and pure black and white eyes. Or it could be an old-fashioned white bedsheet with holes cut into it. Although one might think that spirit core is similar to ghost core, it actually shares more visual and sensual similarities to aesthetics like vaporwave and lo-fi. Spirit core is all about the supernatural, but not necessarily in a horror sense. It's more about accepting that these beings live with us and coexisting peacefully with them. It's very quiet and introspective, almost like if a slice of life show took place in a world with spirits and magic. A prominent example of Spirit Core is the film Spirited Away. Honestly, I couldn't tell you the difference between Cabin Core and Cottage Core. I can't. Pretty much everything about the two are the same. I asked people in the Aesthetics Discord and someone said that they're basically the same except Cabin Core is more of a winter vibe than a summer one. Cabin Core tends to be in a more northern setting, in coniferous forests with lots of snow. As such, I'd say that this aesthetic tends to focus more on the coziness of the cabin as opposed to the more outdoor activity and beauty of cottage core. It's more about the actual building, not the landscape around it. Camp core is all about camping in the woods. It's about spending time in nature and the activities associated with it, like fishing, roasting marshmallows, and stargazing. Imagery associated with camp core includes fire pits, forests, starry nights, and tents. 
When I first read this, I mistook this for a Pokemon move, but apparently Acid Wave is a visual aesthetic based on the hallucinations one sees when they're tripping out after dropping acid. It often includes bright, almost neon colors being overlaid atop pictures, or just straight up presented in swirly, formless patterns, giving a truly trippy feel. Very similar to Acid Wave, but a bit more specific. Like Acid Wave, Acid Pixie includes visuals like those bright, swirly neon colors, but it has darker elements, featuring more black as well as satanic imagery like the pentagram and horns. There's also a fashion element to this aesthetic, described as almost a mixture between indie, kidcore, and goth. It's bright colors on typical indie clothing styles topped with goth makeup such as black eyeliner. Normcore is defined as being as bland and normal as possible. It's the idea of dressing up as to not to stand out or identify yourself with any particular style. The people who follow it say that they find freedom in not being anything special. To be honest, the fashion of this aesthetic overlaps with a lot of aesthetics we covered at the top, like Visco. It's just normal clothes, you should know what that is. Also, for some reason, Costco is a huge part of this aesthetic. There is really no explanation given to why Costco is so popular with people into the normcore aesthetic. If I had to take a guess, it's probably because Costco is a warehouse store that sells ordinary everyday stuff in bulk, but you won't really find anything special there. So in that way, it's almost like the mascot of Normcore. The rainy day aesthetic is all about the feelings you have on a rainy day. I'd say that there's two parts to this aesthetic, the outdoors and the indoors. The indoors part is about staying cozy in your home, often watching the raindrops streak past your window while you're nice and warm, doing something like reading a book. The outdoors part is all about being outside in the rain, jumping in puddles, and all that jazz. However, visuals common to both aesthetics include fog, dark clouds, puddles, and heavy rain. The audio of heavy rain falling is also a major part of the aesthetic, as many people find it calming. Yet another Japanese aesthetic, Yume Kawaii is described as the embodiment of a girl's fairy tale dream, with lots of pink and pastel colors, as well as frills, ribbons, and soft clothes. While there are other aesthetics like this one, Yume Kawaii is special because it takes its visual motifs from modern Japanese pop culture, while other aesthetics tend to take motifs from more retro sources. The fashion includes pastel colored school uniforms, dresses, and sweaters, alongside makeup which makes you look sleepy, glitter, dyed hair, and kompetu, which look like custom jewelry featuring cute characters and designs. What do you know? Another Japanese aesthetic. Yandere is named after the character trope found in anime, and if you know about the anime trope, you already know most of the aesthetic. Yandere romanticizes girls who are obsessive for a person of their affection, who initially doesn't return that affection. Then the obsession of the Yandere will turn violent, resulting in her kidnapping the person she likes in order to try and force them to like her, or she will otherwise try and harm or even kill other girls who show interest in the person she likes. Some visuals common to this aesthetic include Japanese schoolgirl uniforms, knives, rope, and blood. There has been a lot of criticism levied against this trope because it romanticizes abusive relationship dynamics as well as mental illness, but despite that, yandere is a popular trope which is only becoming bigger. Slime punk is a niche music genre that isn't necessarily centered around slime, but heavily incorporates it. The identifying feature of slime punk music are heavy and distorted bass lines, as well as being themed around toxic waste and poisonous gas. As expected, the visual motif includes a lot of slime, as well as the color of lime green. However, some people have informed me that I should try and distinguish slime punk from another aesthetic called slime core, which are often lumped together. Slime punk is what I've described so far, a grunge music genre which is about toxicity, a dark aesthetic involving pollution and sewers. Slime core, on the other hand, is much more lighter in tone. Basically, think about all those YouTube kids' videos about slime. Slimecore places more emphasis on the actual slime itself, typically the DIY slime you can make out of shaving cream, glue, and dye. These tend to be bright colored, and stuff like glitter, charms, and beads are also prominent accessories in slimecore. 
Goblin Core is another aesthetic about appreciating nature, but what makes Goblin Core unique is that it appreciates the parts of nature that is considered ugly. This includes animals like frogs, snails, and slugs, as well as flora like moss, fungus, and just dirty, natural stuff like mud and animal bones. Fashion-wise, Goblin Core lives up to its ugly themes, as it is dominated by clothes with clashing colors, as well as clothes which are suitable for adventuring in the woods and not staying clean while doing it, which lends itself to clothing choices which may not be the best looking. Goblin Core also takes heavy inspiration from the depiction of goblins in fairy tales, which are ugly creatures who hoard trinkets and valuables. As such, people who follow the Goblin Core aesthetic will often hoard small, kind of valuable things. This aesthetic had a small surge in popularity on TikTok in 2020. Gurokawa is a Japanese aesthetic which is known as creepy cute in the West. It's very similar to Yami Kawaii. But while Yami Kawaii is about combining cuteness with knives and medical equipment, Gurokawa is about combining cute with horror. This often manifests in grotesque visuals with a bright and bubbly color scheme. Baroque is an aesthetic which originated in the 17th and 18th centuries. This aesthetic is all about the late to post Renaissance era European art, architecture, and music. Imagine the high ceilings, gilded arches, ornate chandeliers, and large, detailed, and realistic paintings of Greek or Christian mythos. Most of the aesthetic is about this architecture and art, especially the merging of the two since an iconic part of the Baroque aesthetic are these classical paintings I mentioned being painted on the high ceilings. There's also a musical aspect to Baroque, often from the great composers of old, who made stirring symphonies of string and brass. Finally, there is also a fashion aspect to Baroque, but this tends to share a lot with the Victorian fashion, except that Baroque fashion is a lot more ornate and fancier, with lots of jewelry and complicated embroidery. This is basically if Valentine's Day marketing was its own aesthetic. This includes a lot of red and pink, plastic, hearts, cheap chocolate boxes, flower bouquets, Valentine's cards, and red heart balloons. So it's not necessarily about true love, but rather the marketable rendition of love or a grade school view on love and relationships. I guess you can say this is somewhat wholesome. It is the teenage, rose-tinted perception of dating and relationships to an extent, much different from adults' relationships. Sanrio Core is an aesthetic revolving around a single company, which is Sanrio Corporation headquartered in Japan. Sanrio Co's most popular character is Hello Kitty, but they also have more properties like My Melody and Kuromi. This aesthetic invokes a childish and cute-like vibe, and the characters are often used in other aesthetics like Kawaii and Trauma Core. The fashion is an amalgamation of other aesthetics, which will become a common reoccurrence from now on, as a lot of aesthetics overlap and borrow from each other as to become more obscure. The fashion includes platform shoes and thigh-high striped socks, as well as cute accessories of the Sanrio Co. characters. It is another aesthetic which invokes childlike innocence. Shibuya Punk is an urban aesthetic revolving around graffiti and skating. It has a distinct late 90s, early 2000s vibe, with the aesthetic itself being inspired by games like Jet Set Radio and The World Ends With You. While this aesthetic definitely is about the urban lowlife, it does not explicitly show the realistic grimy underbelly of actual cities. It's more of a sanitized, kid-friendly version of low city life and gangs, so it tends to be very colorful, taking place in the daytime in clean streets and maintained buildings. I hope the point is getting across with the pictures I'm showing. In conclusion, I really like this aesthetic because I love cities in general, and this is just cities combined with video game graphics from the early 2000s to make some awesome visuals. Bohemian refers to someone who lives in an unconventional lifestyle, similar to hippies, which we talked about before. As such, many of the fashion choices are similar, but they aren't as iconic or stand out as much as hippie fashion. While vibrant and full of patterns, bohemian fashion has more natural and muted colors, and it is characterized by loose, thready, natural clothing as well as chunky jewelry. Afrofuturism is an artistic aesthetic which takes science fiction elements and adds traditional African cultural visuals. There's also a fashion element attached to it, which shares the same elements as the visual side, sleek and cool futuristic with traditional African clothing examples added. I'm not going to ignore the elephant in the room since the most prominent example of Afrofuturism in popular culture is the Black Panther movie, which exemplifies the aesthetic very well. 
Cripple Punk is an aesthetic which celebrates people with disabilities, and as expected, is mostly used by those people. It's all about being proud of your disabilities, which rejects the societal notion that it is something to be pitied. The fashion and visual aspects of this aesthetic are very similar to Pump, with the same colors and motifs like spikes. However, many of the pictures are centered around the person's disability or something associated with it, like wheelchairs. Medical core is an aesthetic revolving around medical equipment, hospitals, and stuff you can find there. Common visuals include IVs, syringes, bandages, hospital curtains and beds, medical masks and robes, and pills. This aesthetic is often used as a coping mechanism for people who spend a lot of time in the hospital or have medical-related trauma. Craftcore is all about handcrafted items. If it's a hobby which includes making something with your own hands, it's a part of the aesthetic. According to the wiki page of Craftcore, activities which fall under it include, but are not limited to, knitting, poetry, cooking, candle and soap making, woodworking, drawing, and making your own jam jar fabric covers. Yeah, quite a broad variety of hobbies. Candycore, as defined by multiple sources, is a version of gore art where the subject is colorful and unusually gooey, like melting candy and taffy. It is typically more tasteful and accessible to the public than regular gore art. So I'm assuming it's like gore art, but instead of a more realistic take like actual intestines falling out of your stomach, it's gummy worms instead. Now candy gore looks a lot like a smaller subsection of an aesthetic called McCute. But now that I took a look ahead, McCute is way further down in the iceberg, probably because it's actually way darker despite being more well known. So we'll get to that eventually. Cubism was an artistic movement which originated in the early 1900s. It depicted everyday objects from life, but reduced them to basic geometric outlines, giving a lot of the art a cube-like depiction, hence the name. The art had a 3D feel to it, since the artist separated objects into different planes, it would create an illusion of depth, even though you're literally just seeing shapes on a canvas. Cubism did not just reduce objects to cubes, there are also subgenres like Orphic Cubism, which was rounder. Overall, it is a very cool deconstruction of art at the time, and the artists who were part of the movement went on to be known as some of the greatest of all time, like Pablo Picasso. Fanfare is an aesthetic all about the traditional circus and carnival. The visuals associated with it are bright striped tents, hand-drawn posters with exaggerated fonts, hoops, clowns, ringmasters, animals, and other performers like trapeze artists. Food like popcorn and cotton candy are also heavily associated with the aesthetic, as well as more general visuals associated with fairs, like ferris wheels, swings, and rows of light bulbs. This aesthetic romanticizes the golden era of circuses, from the mid-19th century to the early 20th century. The spectacle and atmosphere of a circus is something quite unique, but circuses in that form have been on a decline recently due to the fact that better forms of entertainment have been created, as well as the fact that circuses have been under fire for mistreatment of their performers as well as animal abuse. However, this aesthetic at least tries to revitalize the good part of circuses and evoke that wondrous spectacle. Forest punk is a yet another aesthetic about the woods and nature. However, what distinguishes this aesthetic from the others is that this one is about living off the land. Ideally, this means that you're living deep within the woods inside of a quaint treehouse, foraging, hunting, and fishing for your food. This aesthetic is characterized by more feral activities and visuals compared to other, more softer, natural aesthetics. However, according to the wiki, forest punk can include any activities inspired by the natural world, which means that it covers quite the broad range. Basically, if it's inspired by nature, it's a part of forest punk. Hallyu is an aesthetic revolving around South Korean popular culture, mostly K-pop. Hallyu is actually a Chinese term, and when translated into English, it literally means Korea wave. It basically refers to the rise of Korean pop culture internationally since the mid-1990s, first spreading in East Asian countries before spreading to the rest of the world, and best known for becoming quite popular in the West starting in the mid-2010s due to K-pop. Typically, the entertainment being spread is either Korean pop music or TV shows and movies. I have an entire video explaining Hallyu, so definitely check out that one if you're interested to learn more. The Jersey Shore aesthetic was popular from the mid-2000s to the early 2010s and owed a large part of its popularity to the reality TV show of the same name, 
which aired from, you guessed it, the mid-2000s to the early 2010s. The visuals include the Jersey Shore boardwalks and beaches, nightclubs, and a strong Italian presence, including Italian flags due to the high percentage of people with Italian descent who live in New Jersey. There is also a big fashion element to Jersey Shore, and a lot of it is trying to appear wealthy or high class, even when you may not be. In that regard, it is similar to Glam Girl. The fashion includes the brand Ed Hardy and Affliction, rosaries, skin-tight t-shirts and tank tops, and expensive Italian brands. A lot of the look of Jersey Shore comes to the skin and hairstyles. The Jersey Shore aesthetic is known for the excessive tan people have, as well as the ridiculous hairstyles like the blowout on men and the poof on women. Metrosexual is a term used to refer to typically upper-class successful men who actually put effort into how they look. This term was coined in the mid-90s, and the prevailing belief at the time was that real men didn't put any efforts into looks and taking care of their body, and that they would just put on whatever for clothing and only bother with the most basic care for hair and skin. Therefore, the men who did were seen as strange, but also respected in a way. The fashion of this aesthetic includes more formal clothing like suits, button-downs, and khakis, as well as dress shoes. Activities include going to the gym, taking care of their hair and skin, manicures and pedicures, and shopping. This aesthetic has gotten less stigmatized and more respected as the 21st century matured, as now it's basically accepted and even expected for men to be proactive in making themselves look good. Rivet head is what happens when a metal head is taken to the extreme in basically every aspect. Rivet heads refer to people who listen to industrial music and its subgenres. Industrial is a very abrasive and aggressive genre of music, implementing experimental techniques like white noise, recording sounds made by raw material, and using synthesizers. The music is often accompanied by graphic visuals. The fashion is a mix between military and metal, including combinations of camo-colored tank tops, leather jackets, aviators, combat boots, shaved hairstyles, and piercings. Girls can also additionally wear stuff like leather gear, miniskirts, fishnets, and high heel boots. Sukeban is an aesthetic that, when translated from Japanese, literally means girl boss. Sukeban was a movement which rose to prominence in the 60s among female school children. In this time, girls were barred from joining the many street gangs of Japan, so they just decided to make their own. Since these girls were school aged, a lot of the fashion included schoolgirl uniforms, but modified. For example, their loafers would be replaced by sneakers, and their tops would often be cut to form crop tops. An iconic piece of clothing associated with this aesthetic is the long custom jacket with pro-feminist messages and images featured on it. Anti-fashion is a broad term which refers to people who dress contrary to contemporary fashion, either as a consequence of simply not caring about the current trends or as a rebellion against the status quo of the time. There's a weird cycle between anti-fashion and fashion, where popular fashion trends would try and emulate and copy what anti-fashion was doing at the time. As a result, anti-fashion would become the new popular fashion, and then the people who actually followed the anti-fashion ideology would have to come up with a new counter trend. Blobweb is the corporate art style that many people have been making fun of recently. This is an art style that blends minimalism and corporatism to create a friendly art style that is intended to be inclusive to everyone. The reason why it's so controversial is because the style tends to be used across a lot of companies, and its simplistic, lazy art has no soul to it. All the humans depicted are oddly proportioned and overly stylized, almost like a low-budget children's cartoon. And many of us can see the irony in these giant entities only interested in our money trying to seem friendly through the use of this aesthetic. Their attempts to seem relatable at best fall flat, and at worst create a dumpster fire, such as the Grubhub ad. Another example of Blobweb is the oversimplification of company logos, which has also sparked controversy in the previous year. This aesthetic represents to many the death of the expressive and artistic early internet where creativity and individuality was king, and the ushering in of the new sanitized and standardized corporate internet. Flapper was an aesthetic which was popular among young women in the 1920s. They would go against the expectation of how women should behave and dress at the time. It emphasized women's freedom. 
During World War I, many women experienced economic freedom as they would be working while the men were fighting. Once the men came back, the women were reluctant to return to the previous status quo where they would be submissive and restrained to the household. So they would rebel and go out, dress controversially, smoke, drink, drive, and sleep around. The most iconic part of the flapper aesthetic is the look of these women. The bob cuts, the short dresses, the lipstick, and the fur coats are all staples of the flapper look. Wormcore is one of the silliest aesthetics on this whole list, I guarantee it. It arose in 2019 and revolves around the Squirmolds toy. In 2019, Squirmolds became well known across the internet due to the worm on a string meme, which was very surreal and weird. And as this meme grew in popularity, people would use these worms on a string as decoration or accessories for fashion, almost always in a joking manner. It's really an awesome testament to the strange trends and influence the internet can have. Diesel Punk is similar to Steampunk in basically all of its aspects except for the fact that Diesel Punk is based off the technology of the 1930s and 1940s if technology and society progressed while keeping that overall look. In the real world, the technology of this time was very utilitarian and brutalist, as this was a time period defined by the Great Depression and the Second World War. Often, there's no glamour in Diesel Punk, with the art almost always being grayscale, with heavy emphasis on war machines. Going back in time a bit, Deco Punk is an aesthetic based on the technology and overall look of the 1920s. It's based on the Art Deco look of the 20s, and since the 1920s were a more prosperous time in America, a lot of Deco Punk art is more optimistic than its Diesel Punk counterparts. The story behind this is if the Great Depression and World War II never happened, what if technology and society progressed and became advanced while still keeping the look of 1920s America? There's a lot more emphasis on the high fashionable lifestyle of the 20s, which is what personally makes this aesthetic more appealing to me. I just love the Art Deco style, and extending it to what is basically Art Deco sci-fi is just awesome. An amazing example of this aesthetic is the Bioshock series. Biopunk is similar to cyberpunk, except for the fact that biopunk has a greater emphasis on biological modification and genetic engineering, rather than cyberpunk's emphasis on information and cybernetics. However, the other aspects of cyberpunk do remain, such as the idea of megacorporations controlling and manipulating the average person through the use of biotechnology. While this aesthetic is not as explored as cyberpunk, some properties do come to mind, such as episode 1 of Love, Death, and Robots. However, I realize that the biggest property that falls under the biopunk aesthetic is, surprisingly, Pokemon. While it's more lighthearted than you would expect from the genre, it checks off all the requirements of biopunk, it's just that we don't notice since this franchise simply tells the stories in a biopunk setting rather than exploring its biopunk nature. Cyberprep is cyberpunk, but if the same technological advancements took place in a utopian future, However, some people also claim that cyberprep and cyberpunk are actually the same vision of the future. It's just that cyberpunk shows this future from the lower class point of view, while cyberprep shows it from the privileged upper class point of view. This makes sense especially when you take into account the characteristics of modern day prep and punk aesthetics. The visuals of cyberprep are similar to those of cyberpunk, but typically a lot lighter in both tone and how they actually look. Think about using the same technology, the same buildings, but depicted in a much more optimistic view, showing the good that this technological advancement can have on the quality of life rather than the bad. Honestly, while I absolutely love the idea and look of this aesthetic, I think the cynicism of current society will prevent any mainstream promotion of cyberprep as opposed to the love cyberpunk gets. Cyberpop is a fashion aesthetic which fuses different aspects of retro aesthetics and bright colors and puts them in a futuristic setting. As such, it is classified as a retrofuturistic aesthetic, but it's not as rooted in 1950s culture as retrofuturism. Cyberpop clothing is characterized by bright, contrasting, almost neon colors. Visual motifs from the 50s, 90s, and even the late 2000s, especially from aesthetics like Y2K and Scene, have found their way into this aesthetic's clothing. Also notable is the brand Cyberdog which is a company many people who follow this aesthetic shop from. Their shield necklace is a pretty good example of what cyberpop fashion is about, and as such is a pretty common accessory in cyberpop outfits. 
Italian Mafia is an example of an aesthetic which takes heinous real-world events and controversial figures and romanticizes them. Man, I really hope I don't become the victim of a hit after saying this. The Italian Mafia aesthetic is about the fusion between the high-class lifestyle of these old-school gangsters and their involvement in the dirty world of crimes and killings, and it is often used as escapism for people to fantasize about living a lavish yet exciting life. The fashion of the Italian Mafia is very iconic, including three-piece suits, fedoras, and jewelry such as ornate rings. Due to movies like the Godfather trilogy and Goodfellas, this aesthetic has become popularized, but keep in mind that the real-life organization is not romantic whatsoever. But to their credit, most of the media depicting the Mafia do keep this in mind, and the dark nature of this genre is what drives the appeal of the Mafia aesthetic. Holosexual is just an aesthetic for people who enjoy holographic material, art, and clothing. And I totally get it, the shiny iridescence is strangely hypnotic and definitely fun to look at and make art of. The community arose out of fashion, due to many people enjoying holographic makeup. There's really nothing more I can say about it since it's just an aesthetic revolving around cool visuals. Seapunk can be viewed as a spiritual predecessor to Vaporwave. It's one of the few aesthetics which started out as a niche online thing until it got adopted by mainstream media, and the time it took to go mainstream is surprisingly short. Seapunk focuses on happy, sea-based visuals like beaches, palm trees, dolphins, as well as some 90s nostalgia like hard geometric shapes and older CGI and video game visuals. The colors are also very neon and pastel, with an overall lighter tone than the moody vaporwave that would replace it. Somebody in the comment section of the Seapunk Aesthetics wiki said that it was if Y2K and Vaporwave had a baby, and I think that it is the perfect way to describe how this was a transition between the aesthetics of the 90s and the aesthetics of the 2010s. Seapunk arose on Tumblr in the early 2010s and featured music that is honestly pretty pleasant to listen to. It's got the soft electronic tones of Vaporwave, but it has more upbeat melodies and vocals, and contains more pop influence. Sometimes it even lives up to its name and contains samples of ocean-related sounds. Overall, it is both visually and musically pleasing, and I honestly hope that this aesthetic goes through a renaissance. Cartoon core is an aesthetic which revolves around western animated children's cartoons. This includes cartoons from all different sources and time periods, but it tends to focus on Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon shows from the respective golden ages, around the 90s and early 2000s. However, a lot of shows from the mid-2010s have been getting a lot of love from cartoon core enthusiasts such as Adventure Time, Gravity Falls, We Bear Bears, and Regular Show. If you want to express your love for cartoon core through clothing, an option is to wear merchandise from a cartoon you like and integrate it into your outfit. Comic core is an aesthetic revolving around comic strips. This aesthetic does not include stuff like superhero comics or Japanese manga, and it's more about the Saturday morning comic strips you find in the newspaper. Common elements of this art style include exaggerated features, text and thought bubbles, onomatopoeia, and line work. Nothing much to say about this aesthetic. Like its name suggests, it's just about rainbow visuals. The images and clothing of this aesthetic prominently features rainbow clothing. I really don't know how to explain this further, but I do find it funny that the Aesthetics Wiki article on Rainbow Core individually lists out all the different colors of the rainbow. Another pretty self-explanatory aesthetic, Space Core is an aesthetic all about space. This includes actual celestial objects like planets, stars, nebulae, and galaxies, as well as man-made objects relating to space like telescopes and rockets. This is an extremely broad aesthetic. If there's a visual with anything remotely related to space, it is considered a part of Space Corps. Also, another funny tidbit from the wiki article, the decade of origin is listed as the literal Big Bang. Sad People is an aesthetic which deals with themes of depression, abandonment, loneliness, and other mental illness. The aesthetic consists of low saturated or even straight up black and white images. These images can contain edited photographs or crudely drawn figures. The images often contain text detailing how they feel, and they also implement effects to emphasize the hazy and foggy nature of life with depression. It is similar to Trauma Core, but Sad People focuses less on trauma endured by the person in the past, and as a result contains less visuals of childhood or innocent characters, but it is still used as a coping and therapeutic outlet. 
Real life superhero is named after the people who dress up as superheroes to help their communities. These guys dress like the typical cheesy spandex wearing comic book heroes. Typically, they either do charity work or neighborhood watches. But the more famous ones, like Phoenix Jones, are actually trained in martial arts and go around fighting petty criminals, which at the very least is quite controversial. Ocean Grunge is basically an edgier version of Sea Punk. Basically, it has the sea related visuals of Sea Punk, but darker, both in color and in the contents of the image, often including stuff like shipwrecks and storms. A lot more blacks and grays are used, and it's not as vibrant as Sea Punk. However, this gloomier look and sound make it a very atmospheric aesthetic. Dark Paradise is intended to be a calming aesthetic. It contains soothing images that are gray, dark, and shadowy. It's a weird one to explain, but it takes the fear out of the darkness, and rather takes solace in its almost claustrophobic nature, allowing yourself to be enveloped by the dark like a comforting blanket. That's the vibe I personally get from looking at some of these images. Very self-explanatory, the corporate aesthetic is about what upper middle class people wear to their white collar business jobs. The clothes include button down solid shirts, ties, blazers, blouses, skirts, and dress shoes. Basically, this is what your stereotypical businessman or businesswoman wears to work. Glowwave is an aesthetic which revolves around anything that glows in the dark, specifically man-made neon things. This includes stuff like glow sticks, the scene of glowing material under UV light, and even lasers. Basically, if you've ever been to a laser tag place, Glowwave describes that floor design you see and how some parts of your clothes glow under the UV light, and even the various bright lights of the equipment and the decorations. I mean, at this point, I'm basically insulting your intelligence by explaining these. I hope you still stick around, because while some of these aren't very exciting, they are balanced by some really good ones. Okay, let's actually get to the subject at hand. The butterfly aesthetic refers to images which contain butterflies. The butterflies are often used to give a beautiful and innocent tone to the image. A more broad version of the butterfly aesthetic, bug core is about any and all visuals related to bugs. This can include just images of different bugs. This can also include keeping a collection of bugs or bug related items. This can even include dressing up with bug-like characteristics, like this nifty carapace-like backpack. It's a really unique and quirky look. While dolls are not exclusive to Japan, this aesthetic invokes a specific look of Japanese ball-jointed dolls. These dolls are very similar in look to anime characters, with childlike facial features, large eyes, and heavily applied makeup. The clothes these dolls wear include stuff like platform shoes, ribbons, thigh highs, and poofy shirts and dresses, so it is on the more modern side. The aesthetic includes the dolls themselves as well as people dressing up like the dolls. The people dressing up as the dolls not only wear the clothing mentioned before, but also anime gao kigurumi masks, which I'm gonna be honest are actually terrifying. They also apply makeup on their elbows and knees to emulate the looks of the ball joints and the dolls. To be honest, these ball jointed dolls are something I learned about while researching this video, and it's interesting that the doll core aesthetic is about them and not dolls in general. Despite seeming relatively straightforward, Angel Core actually has a lot of interesting subsections. The primary look of Angel Core is based off the typical depiction of Christian angels and how otherworldly and beautiful they are. Appropriately, it is a very heavenly look. Lots of golden light, clouds, halos, flowing white clothes, harps, and white feathered wings. This aesthetic includes artistic depictions of angels and visuals associated with them, as well as people dressed up as them. The first subcategory of Angel Core is Cherub Core, which is very similar to Angel Core in looks, except for the fact that cherubs look more infant like, and there is more emphasis on visuals associated with something like Valentine's Day, with shapes like hearts and colors like red and pink. Children's toys are also a prominent visual of Cherub Core. Next up, we have Fallen Angel. It is basically Angel Core, but with a darker visual aspect and themes. This aesthetic is based on the idea of fallen angels in Christianity, who are angels banished from heaven. The visuals are very desaturated and low light, but they almost always include an angel figure with wings. It is supposed to invoke a sense of somberness and tragedy, often depicting these angels in a sympathetic light. 
This aesthetic is often used by those who criticize Christianity and religion overall, since the biblical reason for why angels were banished was because they disobeyed God, and many people who rebelled against their religious parents or community can relate. Finally, we have the biblical angel aesthetic, which revolves around what I believe are called a seraphim. This aesthetic is about a certain type of angels as they are described in the Bible, as masses of wheels, eyes, and wings, a far cry from the beautiful winged humans pop culture describes them as. This aesthetic is meant to invoke the sense of dread and almost the Lovecraftian fear of the true nature of biblical beings. The biblically accurate angel has become somewhat of a meme this year, so this isn't too obscure or shocking. Now moving below to devil core, which is an aesthetic revolving around, you guessed it, devils. It's actually a lot less detailed than angel core. Devil core just consists of graphic imagery like blood, gore, satanic rituals, and occult and the occult, as well as more passionate and lustful imagery designed to emphasize sin. There is also clothing associated with devil core, such as your typical devil Halloween costume, but also revealing and tight black or leather clothing, as well as fishnets and bold red or black lipstick. Cult core is an aesthetic which is about imagery of cults. I've actually seen it go viral a bit on places like TikTok and Instagram. The aesthetic is about the idea of being worshipped as a false god, having people devote themselves to you. The images primarily include Im pictures of cult members meeting in ritual, or cult signs and symbols. Honestly, while I do kind of like the imagery of cult core, especially the signs, I do understand why it's controversial, as it romanticizes cults and the abuse or even death they cause. The casino aesthetic is all about the playful atmosphere casinos create and the games people play inside them. There's really nothing I can say to describe this aesthetic, but if you've ever been inside of a casino, you know what this aesthetic is talking about. The loud music and talking, the neon lighting, the drinks, and most importantly, the various games one can play such as slot machines, roulette, and blackjack. The Yakuza aesthetic is about the organized crime syndicate in Japan. As such, the nature and visuals of the aesthetic are similar to the Mafia one we already talked about, depicting the two-sided coin of high luxury life combined with the ultraviolence of underground crime. Fashion-wise, it contains luxury jackets on top of button-down shirts with no ties, tight dresses for the women, and lots and lots of tattoos. Like what I said about Mafia, this aesthetic is often criticized for romanticizing the actual Yakuza. Yankee is another Japanese aesthetic. It refers to Japanese students who are very rebellious, as they dye their hair, do poorly in school, cause violence, alter their school uniforms, and smoke and drink. They are also known for shaving their eyebrows. The name Yankee derives from the term Yankee, which is a name some people abroad use to refer to Americans. This is because these students were often inspired by the American soldiers stationed nearby, as they were Japanese outsiders, hence them often dyeing their hair blonde as well as their loud demeanor. The whole point of people who follow the Yankee aesthetic is that they want to rebel against the overtly polite and mannered nature of Japanese society. Zazu was a World War II French subculture which had people dress up in over-the-top and oversized suits and hats, similar to zoot suits. They would dress up like this in order to go to social dances that played jazz and bebop. Under the German-occupied Paris, individuality was repressed, so this was a way for the youth to rebel. The ethereal aesthetic is light, fragile, and almost makes you feel like it is something not of this world, that you have ascended to a better plane of existence. The aesthetic prominently features the beauty of sunlit nature, old, overgrown buildings, and flowers. It's hard to explain, but I can confirm that it is a very, very beautiful aesthetic. We already covered aesthetics similar to this in the first couple layers, so I'm not really sure as to why it's so far down the iceberg. Regardless, nautical is an aesthetic revolving around life near or in the ocean. This includes boats, docks, lighthouses, seagulls, boardwalks, I think you get the idea. The clothing mainly includes sailor uniforms or clothes which otherwise invoke sailors uniforms, such as through color or type. Also quite self-explanatory, this aesthetic is about getting together with your friends, gathering some snacks, and playing board games, card games, or really any similar type of group activity. 
It's really meant to emphasize the coziness and camaraderie that comes with playing board games with a group of friends. Fittingly, at the time of me writing this, I'm actually meeting up with a group of friends later today to play board games. Ain't that a cosmic coincidence? Psychedelia is an aesthetic which mainly refers to psychedelic music and art. Both forms of art are meant to replicate the experience of altered consciousness drugs like LSD induce in a person. Psychedelic rock was quite popular during the 1960s, with artists like Jimi Hendrix making their genre iconic thanks to sounds like the distorted guitar. Psychedelic art is art that usually depicts abstract patterns and vibrant colors, emulating what one would see on an LSD-induced trip. Certainly a very interesting aesthetic. Wonderland is an aesthetic which seeks to evoke the feeling of being lost and far away from home, but instead of being scared, you're actually kind of fine with it. Named after Alice in Wonderland, a lot of the visuals and ideas of the Wonderland aesthetic come from its namesake. A common motif across Wonderland's visuals is a dark and moody natural landscape, often broken up by a vibrant subject, often representing the lost person. This aesthetic really does invoke a feeling within me, a cold chill which turns into a warmer heat the closer it gets to my core. I either just found my aesthetic, or maybe I need some sleep because I'm writing this at 2am. Like the name suggests, Fawn Core is an aesthetic revolving around the natural beauty of deer, specifically baby deer. The visuals are similar to many other natural aesthetics we've covered before, but specifically is focused on the deer and its characteristics. Surprisingly, there is fashion associated with this aesthetic, which is similar to the Mori K fashion style, but with an emphasis on browns and whites, as well as softer clothes. Basically, it invokes the idea of a soft and cuddly fawn. This aesthetic is actually pretty cute, but considering my only experience with deer is trying not to hit them with my car as they run across the expressway, I can really only think of that when researching this and it's bugging me a lot. Yup, another aesthetic revolving around animals. Fasten your seatbelts because the next few topics we're covering are animal related. Bunny core is all about cute artistic depictions and images of bunnies, and sometimes even older rabbits and hares. That's really it, but I was surprised to find that there was actual fashion to this aesthetic too. It consists of oversized shirts and sweaters, often in white and light brown, emulating the soft and innocent nature of bunnies. Okay, so these animal ones are pretty basic, so I'm gonna speedrun them unless if there's something which specifically catches my eye. Canine core is an aesthetic revolving around images of dogs or wolves. Feline core or cat core is an aesthetic revolving around images of cats, including big cats. The aesthetic also includes images invoking cats, such as cat-related objects, cat paws, and fictional cat boys or cat girls. Frog core is an aesthetic relating to images and memes containing frogs or toads, often with an optimistic or happy tone. This has become a bit of a viral aesthetic on the internet recently, with many memes surrounding frogs being spread. A lot of people into the frog core aesthetic buy this specific frog jacket, which to be honest looks rather comfy if I do say so myself. And finally, we have something that can technically encompass all the aesthetics we talked about before, pet core. However, pet core is really more centered around human companionship with animals instead of the animals themselves. It's all about owning a pet and the comfort that brings to a person. Some examples of the aesthetic include literally petting or cuddling with your pet, or sleeping in the same bed, or even just cute pictures of your animal in the house. Bubblegum refers to the visuals of bubblegum, which is typically quite feminine and prominently features the pastel pink color, although other pastel colors are also sometimes used. The bubble created by bubblegum is an integral image of the aesthetic, but a lot of other bubble or candy shapes are featured in the bubblegum aesthetic. You can really kind of stretch anything that is pink to be part of this aesthetic to be honest. However, there's another bubblegum aesthetic that's a bit more specific. This bubblegum aesthetic is very much influenced by the pop culture of the 2000s, and quoting from the wiki page, combines the childishness of young girls' toys and fashion with the self-expression of teenage and adult girls. It's all about self-love and the confidence and power girls hold in their femininity. Brutalism is an architectural style. It's a very strange style, because despite being quite harsh and grey, it's not utilitarian. 
because there still are design choices in the building that aren't practical for use and are purely for decoration. It's a very harsh look, not intending to hide the rough construction material used to make up the building. Honestly, there's a lot of people who dislike the style, but I actually kind of like it for some reason. The angled shapes look good on the buildings. Like the name suggests, thriftcore is about the lifestyle of thrifting. Obviously, the fashion is almost exclusively thrifted clothes, so it tends to have a cheap, thrown-together vibe, which is what the wearer is going for. However, thriftcore is also about the experience of shopping inside a thrift store, so a lot of the aesthetic also includes cozy images from inside a thrift store. The aesthetic is also quite retro, often featuring filters and subjects which invoke the late 20th century, anything from the 70s to the 90s, since that's when the concept of thrifting became really popular. And there's a lot of emphasis on music in this aesthetic too, with lots of images of records, cassettes, and even CDs inside these thrift stores becoming quite popular. Chaotic Academia is an aesthetic which rejects the other academia aesthetics, which paints an overly romanticized and beautified view of education. Chaotic Academia is all about the nitty gritty of getting an upper education, such as your messed up sleep schedule and diet, cramming and rushing to keep up with your assignments, and consuming literally anything that contains caffeine. However, despite being more chaotic, this aesthetic is actually more focused on education than the other education aesthetics we talked about before, because the whole premise of this aesthetic is about how your life and social circle are affected by studying for school, while the other education aesthetics really only use the school as a mood setting background. This aesthetic is overall filled with relatable stuff you and your friends do in college, and is a lot more realistic than the dark academia or even light academia we covered before, as literally any student can, and probably will, live through this aesthetic. Okay, so for most of this explanation, I'm actually going to rip it straight out of the wiki article, because the way the author describes it is really well done. So here we go. Cherry Emoji Twitter is defined, perhaps above all else, by its aesthetic. This is the femme fatale archetype for the modern age, warped by late capitalist materialism and the pressures of social media. But rather than drawing inspiration from 40s film noir, it looks the kitsch McBling of the early thousands. Think murder plots and juicy couture, coital choking and lacombe lip gloss, daddy issues and brat stalls. So yeah, that basically exemplifies this philosophy behind Cherry Emoji Twitter. Other than that, visuals obviously include the cherry emoji, often in edits or even printed on clothes that girls wear. The clothes in this aesthetic tend to show more skin as well, due to the philosophy outlined earlier. Other than that, colors like red, white, and pink are also prominent in the visual and fashion side of cherry emoji Twitter. The aesthetic is all about being morally depraved and shallow, and it's proud of it. Cottage Gore is an aesthetic which is extremely similar to Cottage Core, as it focuses on the quaint side of living in the countryside by yourself. However, Cottage Gore places more emphasis on the darker aspects of nature. This includes fog, thunderstorms, dark forests, moss, bogs, and mushrooms. However, Cottage Gore also includes aspects of the paranormal and the occult, like deer skulls in a ritual, or cryptids and spirits. Fashion wise, it's also very similar to Cottage Core, except that Cottage Gore uses much darker colors than the natural colors of cottage core, often featuring black clothing. Overall, cottage gore is very much a mysterious and esoteric aesthetic, and I can totally see the appeal. It almost invokes feelings similar to dark academia, but instead of a school, it's a cottage in the woods. Dual kawaii is, as hinted by the name, an aesthetic which is both optimistic and pessimistic at the same time. It really focuses on that feeling of feeling hopeless and lost in the world, and being tired with the current state of your life. However, the flip side is actively seeking to resolve these feelings through self-care and to truly find the beauty in your life. Dual Kawaii is about accepting these two sides of yourself, resolving the conflict between them, and finding inner peace. The aesthetic prominently features the colors black and pink, as well as images which are both dark and beautiful, or images which focus on the internal battle for balance between these two sides of a person. Health Goth is a fashion style which is interesting because according to its creators, it was created specifically as an exercise in aesthetics. And if you remember that little analysis about the current nature of aesthetics I made in the intro before the first layer, the idea of health goth is basically derived from a similar argument. 
Basically, the fashion style is pretty simple. It's mostly monochromatic streetwear, so stuff like black and white hoodies, tracksuits, and yoga pants. However, it can really be extended to any streetwear that contains stark blacks and whites. The creators of Health Goth, artists Mike Grabarek and Jeremy Scott, consider themselves members of the transhumanist movement, which is an ideological movement advocating for more progress in human modification or using technology to enhance the human body. As such, the aesthetic has more futuristic and sterile undertones, and they have said that it is almost a response to all the retro aesthetics being romanticized currently. Ultimately, they claim that Health Goth is solely just a visual aesthetic with no lifestyle behind it, and it was inspired by many images they saw in online spaces. Sandal Punk is an aesthetic which imagines if ancient civilizations such as the Greeks, Romans, or Egyptians had access to more advanced technology which still fit the looks of their time. So basically steampunk, but instead of Victorian England, it's these ancient empires. An example could be Automaton from Greek mythology. This is very similar to Sandal Punk, but Bronze Punk is about putting Greco-Roman aesthetics into the modern world. It imagines what these empires would like if they had survived to the modern age instead of collapsing, which also provides us with a look into how the visuals of these empires could look when combined with modern technology. An example of this could be how Greek or Roman architecture would look like in modern times, aka literally just American government buildings, or how the Roman military could look like if they were in World War II. There's not really much I can say about this, especially considering that there's really nothing online about Iron Punk. It's basically the same as all of the punk aesthetics, but with Iron Age civilizations instead. Okay, now going from ancient history to more recent history, Steel Punk refers to technology of the end of the 20th century, as recent as the 70s and 80s. However, Steel Punk decides to imagine that instead of developing more software-related technology like computers or smartphones, we instead continue focusing on the hardware side of technology and continue pushing those limits. The revival of powered machinery and the visuals of how these powerful, industrial pieces of technology are put together is the basis of Steel Punk. The last of the punk aesthetics for now, Salvage Punk is an aesthetic which focuses on stuff created from junk that has been scavenged. This includes modifying or combining old trash to create new vehicles, clothes, or even buildings. Typically, this type of aesthetic takes place in a post-apocalyptic story or world. However, there is another form of this aesthetic which focuses on people reusing older trash to make newer, useful items. It's an eco-friendly message focusing on how DIYing certain items is better for the environment than using something once and then just throwing it away only to buy some other disposable item. Hyperpop refers to a genre of music which combines regular pop, music, and EDM. It is very energetic and places emphasis on hyperactivity and positivity, often with the bubbly optimism prevalent in mainstream pop music of the late 2000s and early 2010s. It does this through having a strong bass beat combined with upbeat synth music, and uses so much samples and distortion that it is almost overwhelming, giving the music an almost surreal aura. The visual side of hyperpop reflects the chaotic optimism of its music, containing lots of bright, vibrant colors and cluttered shapes and images. A lot of art also tries to emulate the late 2000s through use of other aesthetics like scene or sea punk, but a lot of art also features anime visuals as well. Hyperpop has been quite popular recently because of a lot of hyperpop songs are being used in trending TikToks. Plaguecore is an aesthetic about plague doctors and the stuff they do. Visuals obviously include the iconic beaked plague doctor mask, the other garments plague doctors wear, as well as herbs, lanterns, staffs with the caduceus, as well as older treatment methods from the era when plague doctors were prominent, such as bloodletting. I can personally see why this aesthetic is appealing, because the mask of a plague doctor is a very unique and iconic visual, almost something out of a fantasy universe. Hell, even I dressed up as a modern plague doctor for Halloween a couple years ago. Well, um, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Hate core is an aesthetic which takes feelings of hatred and expresses them in image. That is really it, just pictures containing visuals which imply anger and violence. 
Trend Core is an aesthetic aimed towards mitigating feelings of dysphoria in the transgender and non-binary community. It's supposed to counter the narrative that many people transition because it is quote-unquote trending nowadays. The aesthetic itself contains pictures with messages of love and acceptance. Trill Wave is an aesthetic which is probably one of the broadest ones in this list. It contains elements of music and fashion. First off, the music of Trill Wave can be described as a mixture between chill, lo-fi, trap beats, and rap. It's the type of music you'd find all over the place in SoundCloud back in 2015 and 2016. Visually, Trill Wave is a mixture of basically all the internet-censored aesthetics, both because Trill Wave inspired these aesthetics and eventually they would all influence each other. Trill Wave also includes images over a blank background, which came from SoundCloud-generated thumbnails. The subject of images included in Trill Wave have a wide range and really can be anything you want it to be. Overall, while Trill Wave has died down in popularity due to the music going out of fashion and other similar aesthetics becoming more popular, but it still deserves respect for being one of the biggest influences on the visuals of the modern internet. American Pioneers is an aesthetic revolving around the pioneers who moved westward across the American homestead in the 19th century. A lot of them traveled on the Oregon Trail to either try and reach the west coast of the American continent or to settle down somewhere in between, mainly the Midwest. The most iconic visual of the American Pioneer is a covered wagon, either drawn by horse or by oxen. A lot of the appeal for this aesthetic comes from the ideal that these people were willing to brave the journey and live a simple, frugal life in order to achieve their dreams. Obviously, in reality, the truth is much darker, in both the sinister nature of Manifest Destiny, as well as the struggles these pioneers had to go through. But sticking with the romanticized nature of this aesthetic, the visuals often include the simple lifestyle these pioneers had. This includes stuff like small lob cabins or sod houses, single room schools where children of different ages would study, rustic tools to help you with household chores, as well as pictures of the landscape of the American Midwest. The clothes of the American Pioneer include suspenders, plain button shirts, and straw hats for men, as well as simple dresses and bonnet hats for women. A shortened term for the word bourgeoisie, bougie is an aesthetic depicting the lifestyle of the super upper class, the ultra wealthy. The visuals are basically anything that is stereotypically associated with the life of the rich, expensive dresses, suits, and shoes as well as jewelry, wristwatches, and high-end purses and handbags are just a few examples of bougie fashion. Other than that, bougie visuals include expensive cars, mansions, yachts, and high-end parties. Soft Apocalypse is an aesthetic which imagines a society either slowly in collapse or the structure of society after a catastrophic event. This differs from the post-apocalyptic aesthetic because the post-apocalyptic aesthetic is defined by violence and destruction while Soft Apocalypse is about how people band together and carve out a life in a collapsing world. This aesthetic is very atmospheric, allowing us to soak in a world where old human structures have been overtaken by nature. Despite being an apocalypse, the general vibe of this aesthetic is very peaceful and seeing how humans form quaint, collaborative communities in the ruins of our previous society. It's almost idealistic, showing that even without contemporary luxuries, life could be better after such an apocalypse due to a cleaner environment and the happiness of being part of a tight-knit community with purpose and meaning to the role you have, something many people feel is lacking in current society. Perhaps one of the best examples of the soft apocalypse genre is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game which I have already praised many times on this channel. Because despite taking place 100 years after an apocalyptic event known as the Great Calamity, the first thing you notice about the world is simply how beautiful it is. The breathtaking natural scenery of Hyrule, dotted by small surviving pockets of civilization, creates what is possibly one of the most stunning maps in gaming. Because nature doesn't care if our human monuments crumble, it will still march on, still grow, and that is the beauty of the soft apocalypse. Bloomcore is an aesthetic all about images of flowers. That's really it, although there are several subgenres, including Gardencore, which is pictures of planted flowers, Metacore, which is pictures of flower meadows, and Petalcore, which focuses on the romantic aspect of flowers. That's really it, just good looking pictures of flowers. There's also a fashion aspect to Bloomcore too, which is similar to the Art Mom or Plant Mom aesthetic we talked about earlier. Basically lots of denim, sweaters, natural colors, flannel, and add that flower flare stuff like floral prints and flower crowns. 
Ratcore is a aesthetic primarily used in memes. It contains edited images of rats, either actual pictures or artistic representations. A lot of these edits fall into either the cute category or the more weird and surreal category. While this is primarily a meme, I know people who own pet rats and are actually a huge fan of these edits of them, and sometimes even edit pictures of their own pets. So yeah, it's weird and obscure, but certainly has its own fan base. Cuddle Party is another nostalgia-based aesthetic, but instead of focusing on specific brands or locations, it's more about the memories you have of your childhood and those feelings of happiness associated with those certain memories. Some examples can include sleepovers with friends, or the adventures you had in the seemingly endless summer vacations of elementary school. A lot of this aesthetic was created by people who were young in the 80s and 90s, but there's no reason why people who had childhood in the 2000s and the 2010s can't use this aesthetic with their own childhood memory. McBling is a very interesting aesthetic due to how it was a reaction of the events of the early 2000s. In the early 2000s, events such as the dot-com bubble bursting and the fear following the 9-11 attacks ended the optimism of the 90s, and as such kind of killed off the Y2K aesthetic. Because of many people wanting to distract themselves from the dire situation the real world was heading in, a culture we now know as McBling arose. McBling became popular alongside the first wave of social media, such as YouTube and MySpace. McBling is basically a combination of celebrity worship as well as consumerist flaunting of your material possessions. This includes stuff like decorated flip phones, over-the-top jewelry, and large, expensive cars like Humvees. Other iconic images of the McBling aesthetic include the color hot pink, as well as those tabloids you always see at the supermarket checkout. However, by the late 2000s, the cynicism surrounding shallow material flaunting, exacerbated by the 2008 recession, saw the end of McBling. Golden hour refers to the time of sunrise or sunset, where the light of the sun often produces a golden color in the sky and washes all objects in that same color. Typically, this aesthetic includes images of landscapes from the US coast in summer, in places like California and Hawaii. Palm trees are also a popular subject in these images, which usually depict the golden sky around sunrise or sunset, contrasted with the landscape or subjects silhouetted by this golden light, creating a very striking look. This aesthetic can also include images taken of people during sunrise or sunset, capturing them, or even just their eye, in this warm light. Just a very visually beautiful aesthetic. Zentai is a fashion aesthetic featuring skin-tight morph suits or skin suits. Often these morph suits have intricate designs on them, sometimes even resembling something closer to a walking art piece. Other times people wear clothes on top of these morph suits. Even more rarely, some people use makeup and masks on top of these morph suits to look like dolls or anime characters, which I'm going to be honest is so uncanny valley. This aesthetic is worn for many different reasons, including cosplay, aesthetic or artistic performances, or even something to wear to a sporting event. And now, we have the last aesthetic in layer 4, Futago. It's another aesthetic originating in Japan, and it means twinning. Their name comes from the Japanese singer duo, The Peanuts, who were identical twins popular in 1958 and would often dress and present themselves identically. Over the next couple decades, the idea of twinning would become more popular until it reached its peak in the 1990s. The idea of twinning was that you and a close friend would wear very similar outfits, typically only differing in minor yet deliberate ways. This aesthetic is meant to show a special connection you have with someone and signifies close friendship. And that is it for part 2 of the Aesthetics Iceberg. I will be working on part 3, the final part of the iceberg, covering the rest of the layers. I'll try and get it out as fast as I can, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.